What's up, love muffins? It's me, Keisha, and I'm here with this week's All Tea All Shade Power Season 3, Episode 3 review. So we start off this episode in Washington, D.C. of all places. We did not see that coming at all. See this kid sticking up a pharmacy, and then this little African boom by the dude is in the in the aisles or whatever. We don't know if he's with the guy, if he's not with the guy at first. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's not down with what's going on because the, the, the guy that's um, holding up the cashier at the pharmacy has a gun. He was like, I didn't know we was having guns. Like, what the fuck is going on? This is way too much. I thought we were just going to play CSI. I did not know this was about to be some menace society type shit. What the fuck is going on? So the cashier presses the button to signal for the cops for help or whatever. And the next thing you know, we see Anika Noni Rose, a.k.a. Laverne, a.k.a. Jukebox, walk into the pharmacy. So we think that, you know, she got the call when the uh, guy pressed the, you know, the bat signal or whatever. So she comes in and she points the gun at the dude that's holding the cashier up. The cashier is like, you know, I pressed the signal or whatever. She's like, you know what, I'm really sorry you did that little man shoot him and so then next thing you know we see the dude shoot the cashier we like what the fuck is going on she's a dirty cop and then she was like sorry little dumb motherfucker but you got to go too so she shoots the little dude she tells the other little dude the little african boom by the dudes gone about his business to run then she calls in and tell him that shots have been fired two of uh, people are down and she had to shoot him because you know she came in on the robbery or whatever so I'm like, oh my God, Anika Noni Rose is playing a motherfucking crooked ass cop and I'm here for it. Yes. So then we see her go home to her girlfriend and then she puts some bottles of codeine in the refrigerator. So I'm like, okay, so these motherfuckers over here sipping some lean. Okay, that's what they like to do on their free time. Okay, girl. So her girlfriend asks about old boy who's been in and out since she brought him in from the hospital. And then all of a sudden it clicks in my head. She's talking about Kanan. So then we see Laverne, a.k.a. Jukebox, goes up the steps. And then we see Kanan burnt the fuck up laid out on the bed looking like a crispy ass piece of bacon and i'm like mm, give me a slice <laughs> ghost and angie are playing tag and shit in the middle of manhattan and i mean these motherfuckers just acting like they on an episode of glee i just hate them niggas so she want to know if everything went okay with the kids and he thinks that it went great and he wants them all to be a family like they depart your family or the brady bunches and shit i'm like what delusional ass world are you two coons living in that y'all live in this make-believe ass bubble where it's just rainbows unicorns and dragons and shit like bitch this ain't game of thrones sit your ass down and once again her nosy ass asks him is everything all right with the club since he left her in the house with the kids the first time they came over i'm like bitch don't you get you a tasha 2.0 he gonna always leave you alone with the kids that's what this lousy ass nigga is going to do to you uh duh that should let you know right then they're not to fuck with this nigga because he has all the fuck boy tendencies so he apologizes for leaving her in the house with the kids or whatever and so they in the middle of the street caking and shit like the feds ain't watching and lobos ain't right around the corner and then we see Greg ass at a hot dog stand getting some coffee or whatever. And he's watching their every move. Tommy and Holly, we see them getting in the car with Tasha nonetheless. And we are shocked by this because you know Tasha don't really see it for them niggas. She tells them that she got a new business ventures for them to clean. going to take the dope money and use it as a front for this weave shop. And so they're going to use the dope money to buy hair in bulk and then sell it at a cheaper price to other wholesalers. So Tasha needs Lakeisha, her homegirl, to start selling the weed out of the salon she copped for her. So now they tell us how Lakeisha became a business owner out of the fuck nowhere. Tasha tells Keisha, you know, we're going to sell this shit wholesale to our competition and then retail to the customers and then we'll double and triple the motherfucking profits. And you know, Lakeisha's all about a coin because, you know, that bitch ain't never had nothing in life. So she's like, okay, girl, I'm down with it. So Ghost is steady being worsome and hitting up Tommy every motherfucking five minutes and Tommy's still treating him like a bitch he fucked on the first night and just don't want to deal with no more. And little does Ghost know that while he's sitting up here calling in Tommy every five minutes that he's being followed by Greg. Then we switch to Julio fucking the shit out of the Korean version of Angela. And let me just say, he was giving her some old after the club ass sex 
I was just not impressed. I was like, this is what we've been waiting on all this time, Julio? Like, all this old fast ass pumping, this old rabbit fucking. Like, we did not want that type of sex scene from you, Julio. We wanted you to do some old slow shit, some old hair pulling. That old bang, 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 bang shit. That didn't turn nobody on. Like, we was disappointed, Julio. Like, I wanted to put my clothes back on. I was just not here for you and that foolishness. So, after they get done fucking, the little Korean chick start sniffing some coke. And he like, you know, you need to, you know, chill out on that. Because you was snorting, you know, before we even fucked. And she was like, you know, this cool. I got this. This some weak ass shit anyway. And so, she tell him that Dylan, Chin's son, give it to all the girls when they have customers. So, Julio automatically then picks up the phone and dials Tommy to tell him what the fuck is going on. So then we see Kane and Crispy crunch the ass, laid up in the bed or whatever. And Laverne come up in the room looking like Cleo 2016. And she got a cane in her hand. And then we find out that they're cousins. And so she want to know why he's there and why she have to drive all the way to New York to get his ass about the motherfucking hospital and bring his ass all the way to motherfucking Washington, D.C. So he lied and tell her that he got into a fight with some niggas over some territory. She like, bullshit. Bullshit ground turkey. <laughs> like, who the fuck are you lying to? She want to know the truth, and she refuses to give him any more pain medication until he tell her the fucking truth. And then Stimpy from across the way, they own the other little nightclub, the two little white boys are having dinner with this bitch named Karen Bad, but set or whatever. And so Ghost pays their little dinner tab, and they like, who the fuck pays the tab? And then Ghost asks up here, and he like, you I want to thank y'all for y'all unsavory ass business practices or whatever. They looking like, uh, can you not interrupt our dinner session? Like, we did not ask for you, sir. So, he introduces himself to Karen Bay. He t you know, he knows everything about her. He run down all the tea on her, and she's impressed by this. And he tells her to basically to watch the company that she's keep, because these two motherfuckers ain't about shit. Then we see Angela running around Brooklyn and Manhattan and she trying to find a new crib for her and Ghost and the kids. I'm like, I'm like y'all motherfuckers are moving so fast. Them kids came up one time and y'all already looking for new cribs. Girl, sit down somewhere. So the least age is like, so this is for you and your husband? And she's like, no, my boyfriend. I'm like, bitch, you sound real stupid talking about your boyfriend. Don't you mean your nigga that's married to a whole nother bitch? But oh, I forgot. You don't know that he's never divorced Natasha. Like, I cannot wait till that shit come up in conversation. Oh yeah, by the way, I could never divorce my wife because I cannot, you know, allow her to be able to testify against me in court in case some shit ever go down. So, so you always be my side, bitch, for life. Deal with it, Angela. Deal with it. Then we see Tasha take Holly to the beauty shop or whatever, and Holly walk her little frail ass up in there Thomas her, what's that smell? Really, Holly? Really, Holly? Really, Holly? You ain't never smelled no damn black hair being straightened? You tried it, Holly. Black lives the fuck matter, Holly. Black lives the fuck matter. Get it together, Holly. Fuck, motherfucking slap your ass. I should then introduce it, Holly to Lakeisha, and Lakeisha look at her like, what? What's up, bitch? Hi, how you doing? What the fuck? What you want? Huh? What, what, what the fuck you want? <laughs> Lakeisha, like, ain't that the bitch that stole your motherfucking earrings? And Tasha like, Lakeisha. She like, no, 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 Lakeisha, me, bitch. And that bitch tries to say anything about her, I'm gonna be her flat ass. I was like, well, Keisha, at least somebody around her got some goddamn sense. So, Holly asks Tasha if Lakeisha knows why she's there. And Tasha is like, she don't know shit. And it's going to stay that way. Because you're going to keep your mouth shut. That way, if shit ever goes down, Keisha can say she ain't know nothing. And I'm like, you know what, Tasha? You's a bad bitch because I don't want to know nothing. I don't want my name and shit around this motherfucker. My name is Keisha and I ain't in it. So, Holly old tadpole looking ass is like, okay, I get it, plausible deniability. And Tasha is like, shut your dumb ass up and like bump her ass. And I'm like, you should have bumped her even harder. You know, a little frail ass with a like broken half. Ghost is at the club dressed like a gay ass Mr. Rogers. Karen Bissett shows up and she knows that he took them clubs from Stern and she's impressed by this. So, she tells him how she's going to refurbish an old apartment building and turn it into a hotel and how she want to put a bar and a club inside of it and, she, and how she wanted little new kids on the block from across the way to do it at first but now that she done met Ghost she's kind of have a second thoughts so at this point she want to like basically survey the two uh, club owners to see who would be best to go into business with this box old skank ass girlfriend 
is placing burn cream all on cane and old wounds and shit. And I'm like, bitch, put on some gloves. Sanitary much? Ugh, like, ugh, ugh. All his old nasty ass flesh on your fingertips. Bitch, wash your hands. Ugh, bleach that shit. She telling him how, you know, he gonna need to, you know, get himself better and how she's an RN and that's how she met Jukebox. And so then next thing you know, this bitch start rubbing his dick and he looking at her like, uh, bitch, that ain't burnt down there, bitch. My arm is on thing that's burnt. My dick ain't burnt. What the fuck are you doing? Like, I am not turned on in the least. And so she looking like, oh, what the fuck? Kana like, uh, can you get me my meds, please, <laughs> ma'am? <laughs> you know, Laverne said, no, you can't have no motherfucking meds. We find, so then we find out that Laverne, aka Jukebox, owes Kana a favor because when she was younger, her daddy put her out for being gay and Kanan, you know, helped her out and took her in. Kanan asked, you know, the girl, you know, are you Jukebox's girlfriend? And she was like, yeah, but I like niggas too. I mean, obviously. <laughs> Let me suck on your dick. Uh. <laughs> so he asked what well, she's drinking. Cause that shit looking mighty tasty. Cause she been sipping on the shit ever since she walked in the damn room. And so she was like some Texas tea. You know what I'm saying? You want to sip my nigga? And so he was like, I mean, yeah, give me some. Give him a sip or whatever. And he's like, this sweet ass, tart ass shit. What the fuck is this shit? She was like, don't worry. It'll kick in in a minute. I'm going to take you another little sip. She tells him how, you know, Laverne looks up to him, and he was like, she don't look up to me, the bitch, you know, when became a cop. She must certainly don't look up to me. So, the girl is like, you know, is there going to be a rematch between whoever fucked you up? He was like, of course there will be, but I'm too fucked up to go at Ghost. And then he fixes it and says Ghost, like with an S on the end. And so, she looking like, and oh, Holly and Tasha are in the car. Oh, Holly mentions how Lakeisha really has Tasha back and how she peeped her that she was giving her little dirty looks and shit when they was at the shop. And she's like, you must have told her about the earrings. And Tasha was like, why would not? You took them, didn't you? And Holly was like, yeah, I did. And I'm like, about time you told the truth about something, you little lying ass heifer. And so Tasha rolled her ass like, ooh, I should swerve this motherfucking car. <laughs> Next thing we see, the police flag Tasha. And she like, oh, fuck. Put your seatbelt on. Shut the fuck up. Holly ass is panicking and all nervous. She panicking like she the one that's black. I'm like, bitch, you white. You all right. They ain't going to shoot you. If they do shoot you, it'll be a little graze wound. They ain't going to shoot to kill your ass. So she like, oh, my God, I got this bag full of money that we still ain't deposited yet and Tasha like look here cracker you ain't about to send my ass to jail sit your ass back and shut the fuck up and let me handle this so the police officer comes to the car and asks for you know her license and registration and all that shit and uh he tells Tasha that she made an improper lane change and then Holly asks once again stepping up when they, nobody asked her to she was like I'm so sorry officer it's my fault Tasha's my nanny if she did anything wrong it's because I was just rushing her to get back to my place I'm so sorry and so Tasha look at her like did you just call me a nigga like I feel like you low key just called me a nigga but I'm gonna go with it Tasha didn't kick in the high girl and she come with this old Jamaican ass accent and she's like, me sorry sir, me never realized I didn't put on me seatbelt. And I'm like, what in the fuck is going on here? I die laughing. And the officer looking at them like, okay, Thelma and Louise, I don't know what the fuck y'all got going on, but I'm ready to get home. All right, bitches. So, so Julio and Tommy confront Chin about how his son has been stepping on their product and turn it into shit. And so she ain't like, well, it ain't really none of your business what the fuck we do with it after fuck we buy it. And Tommy's like, well, mm -mm. yeah, it is because if you're selling shitty dope, somebody's gonna die, then the police gonna come and we all gonna be fucked up and nobody wants that. So she is like, I don't know what you're talking about. Basically, he's trying to save his son's ass and put up a front. And so Tommy's like, look, well, look, whoever's doing this in your organization is pocketing the extra money, so you really need to handle that. And so Shannon is like, if this is true, then it's because you ain't come through on your promise for more product. And Tommy like, you know what? You right. I'm going to need you to right this wrong so we can have a long-lasting relationship. And Tasha and Holly are at Tommy's crib, and they are just kiki and her. They're sitting up there drinking bottles of Moscato and shit and cheese and crackers, and they having a good old time. they like the best of Judy's. Remember I said in my Power Season 3 predictions that Holly and Tasha are going to become friends. I told y'all. Pat on the back.
to me. Tasha admits that she likes to do impressions and shit. You know this bitch was gonna be a wild now girl and shit. So Holly is surprised by this. She's like, bitch, I ain't know that about you. And Tasha's like, girl, a lot we don't know about each other. And they get each other like, give each other a little eye like, okay, bitch, I see you. We gonna learn some things about each other. We two crib now, son. And we two bitches that's alike. So Holly asked her to do an impression of Tommy and she does a spot on impression of Tommy. It was spot on. I was like, okay, Notori, bitch. So Tommy come in and he angry as always. He bad they having fun while he out here trying to move weight and shit. Holly, big mouth ass, tells Tommy that they got pulled over. I'm like, Holly, can you shut the fuck up sometimes? Learn how to keep a secret. God damn it, the shit you don't need to be talking about, you talk about the shit that you do need to be talking about, you don't say shit about. Girl, shut your dumb ass up. So she tells them that they got put over by the police, but then they handled everything and they have a little cute little mini family moment. I'm like, you know what? Y'all could have been a really cute, you know, for some you, Tommy, Ghost, Holly. Y'all could have been going on double dates, just being criminals together. Like, God damn it. So Tasha prepares to leave to get home to the kids and Holly is like, you know what I'm saying? It's real fucked up how Ghost left you. And Tommy like, girl, shut the fuck up. We ain't trying to talk about that nigga tonight. She don't want to talk about him and neither do I. And so... Tasha like, it's cool, you know, it's been hard, but it's whatever, I'm good, I'm that bitch. And Holly then fishes to know and if he got another place. And so Tasha's like, nah, he moved in with that bitch, but I'm going to see y'all later, I got to go. So after she leaves, he says to Tommy, see, Ghost is going to be at Angelus, you can get him there. And I was like, you's a sneaky bitch, you a pretty kick in with this bitch, and then you plot to kill her goddamn husband. Holly, somebody need to shoot you in the chest again. Box old rotten mouth ass girlfriend is drinking another cup of lean. I'm like, bitch, all your teeth gonna fall out. If you ain't got no teeth, bitch, how the fuck you gonna talk, let alone suck somebody dick? I mean, don't nobody want no gummy ass <laughs> dick sucking ass, bitch. So Laverne come home and asks, you know, how was he? I mean, I bet you it was slow. I bet you it wasn't no good dick. And she was like, girl, I ain't get a chance to fuck. We ain't you fuck. And she like, why not, bitch? That's the one thing I asked your dumb ass to do all day. And she was in no condition to fuck. So I turned him on to some of that lane. And Laverne is like, bitch, I'm trying to wean him off drugs, not keep his ass on drugs. I'm trying to get this nigga clean. And so the girlfriend is like, no, it's starting to make him feel good. He says something about getting back at Ghost. And so Jukebox paused for a minute. She was like, not Ghost. Ghost. He let that book smart motherfucker beat him. What else he say? And the girl was like, that's all he said. I did good, right? I did good, huh? I did good, master. And so Jukebox pushed up against the refrigerator. She was like, you got a lucky hoe. Don't ever go against my wishes again. And next thing you know, they get on that little les bot shit. And they start finging and finding each other and choking each other. And I was like, girl. Am I watching Cinemac at the door? What the fuck is going on? Okay, enough. Bella tells Ghost about the place that she wants them to get together. And he tells her that he may be able to afford it. You know what I'm saying? If he get this little gig with Karen. So she all happy and shit. She is happy than a motherfucking Bessie bug. So... He about to get in the car to go to work, and then next thing you know, she spot Greg across the street, and she like, uh-oh, I think I forgot something in the house. I'm going to go back and get it. He was like, well, all right, I'm going to see you later. So then when he leaves, she go across the street to confront Greg about following her. He was like, Angela, girl, don't flatter yourself. I ain't even following you. I'm following the ghost. He's like, I ain't got time for this shit today. And so he grab her and swing her and push her into the fence, and as he's doing it, she trying to reach in her bag to find her gun, but it ain't there. Ha, 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 bitch. Like, what you gonna do, shoot me? Like, really, that's what we doing now? I used to fuck the shit out of you. Now you gonna shoot me? Okay, Angela, have several. So she threatens to scream and get him arrested for stalking. He's like, okay, do it. And then I'll tell them how you still fucking the man that stole Isabel Ruiz's sketch, Angela. I mean, you're making this way too easy. I mean, come on, bitch. So she was like, so she says to him, he's clean. And he was like, mm, no, he's not. This is him hanging outside of Tommy Egan's place. And he actually is shocked. She is shook. Because once again, she's been duped. And somebody know more about her nigga than she does. So, Greg is like, I bet he didn't tell you he was still talking to Tommy. He was like, oh, Angela. Trouble in paradise. Angela goes, you're following him too? That would be law enforcement misconduct. Except you're not law enforcement right now, are you? Back off. You're right, I can't out you to Mike, but if you get caught, I won't have to. Greg says, for me to get caught, um, you'd have to warn St. 
Patrick that I'm on to him. And I don't really think you're going to do that. Because I think you're afraid of what he might do. <laughs> Big dumbass decides to take Angela's gun to school for show and tell. And he tells his little white buddy, Andrew, my mom was about to find it when she was cleaning my room, so I have to find another place to hide it. <laughs> like, Tariq, ugh. So then when the teachers come over, like, uh, I need for you two to get inside. Like, what the fuck y'all over here doing? Y'all over smoking? What the fuck y'all doing? So he takes Tariq's book bag and open it up, and he sees the gun. And we see ghosts rushing into their little private school, and he asks Tasha what's wrong, and Tasha tells him that you know Tariq got caught with a gun at school. He was like, Tariq ain't got no gun. What the fuck get a gun from? The only place he could've got a, he could've got a gun from is from you, because you got a gun at home, and I ain't at home no more, because you put me out, so the gun had to come from you. And she look at him, and she said, really? Really, Ghost? You know I ain't the careless enough to leave my shit around. And he was like, well, I mean, it had to come from you. I mean, it just had to. And I'm like, I cannot stand Ghost. I mean, if the writers want to make us hate him, they have fucking succeeded. Because I have never in the history of television or movies ever in life hated a fictional character as much as I hate Ghost James St. Patrick and Angela Simmons or whatever the fuck her name is. I hate the both of them so fucking much so then they got called into the fucking principal office and so ghost put on his best white man voice he was like you know i'm really sorry we don't allow guns in our house we don't know where tyree got this gun from i'm so sorry <laughs> and so the principal is like you know well the gun is registered to a AUSA angela valdez do you know a angela valdez <laughs> and ghost they're like dun, 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 dun. and tasha sitting there like Yeah, we know that bitch. So the principal says that Tyreek has had multiple fights at school, and now that you know he's brought a weapon to school, they have no choice but to expel him. And that there's really no conversation that needs to be had, so you niggas can get the fuck up out my office. And Tasha said, hold up, hold There's always a conversation to be had, especially at this school. Deanna Steinberg had a conversation when she got caught changing grades in the system. Sean Gardner was busted for stealing money out of the vending machine. Chris was like, those were non-violent incidents. Try again, nigga. <laughs> she was like, okay, I get it. So the black kid gets to spell, but Jeannie Michelle don't after they assaulted the girl in the cross scene with their sticks. Is that what you're telling me? Huh? Is that what you're telling me, Suzanne? Suzanne, the principal, says, look, Miss St. Patrick, there may be a way to keep Tariq at the school. They leave the office. Tasha Tariq and goes to Tasha tell Tariq to weigh his ass downstairs because she going to see about him in 2.2 seconds. So then, Ghost says, you were, listen, you were great now. And she said, and you were no help at all, as usual. How in the hell did he get Angela's gun? Tell me that, motherfucker. How about you tell me that? So he's like, I don't know, Tasha. I wasn't there the whole night. And she said, what the fuck do you mean you weren't there the whole night? You left my kids alone with that woman? That was not a part of the deal, Ghost. He's like, look, I'm sorry. I had to go see Tom. I don't give a fuck if you had to go see Jesus, nigga. You should have brought them home first. Love should have brought your ass home last night, bitch. But it's a good thing. We won't have to have this conversation again. You know why, motherfucker? Because my kids won't be staying at that bitch's house ever. Ever, ever, ever again. Tasha, be reasonable. Nigga, what? Excuse me. What? Be reasonable? Ghost? Oh. And Ghost questioning Tariq about bringing the gun to school. And Tariq has gained balls of motherfucking steel. Tariq tells them white kids shoot up school all the time. Watch the news. What the fuck are you two motherfuckers questioning me for? So Ghost tries to be father of the year. Did you disrespect your mother? Uh, yeah. You do it all the time. He's doing what he see your ass do. A uh, duh. Ghost try to grab him, make him sit up. I'm like, nigga. Okay, Ghost. And he's like, I'm not playing with you tonight. And Tariq say, I'm not playing either. You ain't here to protect us anymore. And Ghost look at him and he feel bad for like 2.2 seconds. But you know, Ghost don't feel bad about shit for too long. So he tells him that he has to be on punishment and ask for his phone. And Tariq says, no, I'm giving you shit. Like, who the fuck are you, nigga? Like, what? And so Tasha said, tell him, if you don't give him your goddamn phone, if I slap the dog shit out of you, and Tyreek look at her like, do it, I dare you. Tasha goes in the beat him down mode and snatches the phone from him, and Tyreek get up and storm off. And so Tasha turns to Ghost and said, you know why he's acting out like this, right? 
If he didn't get caught with that gun, would you even be here tonight? So go says Tasha, that's not an excuse. Are you kidding me? It's up to you and me to make sure they understand the repercussions of their actions and their decisions. And she says, And of your decisions too. Who gonna hold your ass accountable? Who gonna hold your black ass accountable? Huh? Huh? You tell me that. Girl, I cannot stand ghosts. Oh, he's the most condescending, self-absorbed, in denial ass, arrogant motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. We see Angela, she come home and put her gun in the safe and ghosts come out the room. He asks her, why would she have an unsecured gun around his kids? And she was like, I didn't have time to put it back in the safe because you brought the kids home early and I wasn't expecting them to be over here early, Jamie. He's like, so it's my fault? She says, I'm not blaming anyone. I put my bag in the closet on top of the shelf. What was Tyreek doing through my going through my stuff anyway? He's like, he's a boy. That's what boys do. And she's like, right, I get it, because I don't have kids. Okay, remind me again that I don't have fucking kids, ghost. Okay, do that shit. And so he was like, You don't. I mean, I'm sorry, you don't. And so she says, So I guess snooping through my shit is hereditary. And ghosts look at her like, Did this bitch? This what we doing now? That's what that's really what we do. Okay, so like you know what I mean? You need a little space because I'm about to slap the shit out of you in like two point five seconds. So they like part like the Red Seas and shit. And then he asks her, "Why you even got a gun anyway?" And she's like, "Cause you know, I'm an AUSA and I work high risk cases." Have you seen Tommy lately? He says, "No, I went by his house." He wasn't there. He don't want to see me. And anyway, I asked you about a gun. You asked me about Tommy. He's like, I had to pick between Tommy and you. I picked you, bitch. And so she apologized to him about the gun again. And she was like, you know what I'm saying? You know, I really wanted us to be a family, but I guess the kids ain't gonna be able to come over here no more. He was like, nah, they not. Look, I just think it's best that, you know, I hang with the kids solo dola for a while. And her feelings is her shit. Like she on the verge of tears. I'm like, bitch, you don't even know them damn kids. Shut the fuck up. The dude from the store is at Jukebox Crib. He's panicking about the killing and shit because he's looking at her like, bitch, you can kill him without blinking. What the fuck will you do to me? And so she's like, look, I'm a cop. I got this. And so she's cooking up this little scheme that's going to get him enough money to go to college. She just needs his help. And he was like, look, I'll let you know because shit is hot. The block is hot. The block is hot. <laughs> and he don't want no parts of this shit. And came this over here in the whole entire conversation. He tell her, look, let this little motherfucker go on about his business because he ain't ready. And I don't know what your ass is up to, but leave the fuck alone. I was in the bathroom taking a pregnancy test and this bitch is pregnant and she is pressed and she is disgusted and she is distraught. So she rip up all the evidence and throw the shit away and then she confront Tommy about when the fuck is you gonna kill this nigga and cause she know lo and behold she pregnant on the low and ain't told him and she like I don't even know if I'm gonna be keep my baby I don't even know if I'm gonna be alive tomorrow I don't know what the fuck is going on I need to know what the hell is going on in my life he like I'm gonna handle it she's like when and so as she's you know questioning him he gets a text message from Tariq saying you know he need to talk and I ran out the house meet me at the basketball court and so of course says he loves the kids he's gonna go to go pick up his nephew Ben is disciplining his son for stealing from him and so to discipline him he makes his son cut off his own pinky finger and I was like well that's some shit that they need to been over there doing with Tariq so next thing you we see is Kana and Jukebox at the kitchen table he want to know what kind of scheme is she planning on doing and she was like you know what in order for me to tell you what I'm up to I need you to let me know what the hell your ass is up to she want to know what happened to Sean. And he lied first. And he was like, you a cop? I can't trust you. So she brings up Ghost and asks if Ghost is the one that fucked him up. And Kanan tells her that, you know, Ghost set him up. And he lets her think for a minute that Ghost killed Sean. But then he finally admits that he did it. And so Jukebox is just as crazy as this nigga. She was like, well, shit, you did what you have to do. You ain't raised that little nigga ghost did. Sean was a pawn. You sacrificed pawns, pawns for the greater good. Shit, no dirt off our motherfucking hands. Tommy goes to the basketball court, and Ghost is the one who actually texts him. And Tommy is pissed. He's like, I thought I told you to stop playing on my motherfucking phone, nigga, like shit. So Ghost says to Tommy, Lobos wants me dead. And he's like, what you talking about? Because he want to know, like, do this nigga know I'm supposed to be killing him? And so Tommy plays it off. 
And Ghost says, I think Lobos used you to lure me to the park that night, but you stopped it. I think we should work together, you know, be on some Ghost and Tommy type shit, bring that motherfucker down. He's my enemy, so he's your enemy too. Means you're gonna be next. He's like, uh, no, he needs me. And then Ghost all arrogant ass says, he needs you for now, Tommy. What happens when you fuck up and make mistakes? And Tommy was like, when? Ain't no if in this motherfucker. It's just when? You just know I'm gonna fuck up? He was like, you know what? You still on that same old bullshit. You still the same old punk ass, puss ass nigga you was two episodes ago. Nigga, fuck you. And so he go to walk away and goes, he's like, Tom, you saved me. Let me save us both. It's Lobos coming after me. And Tommy was like, goodbye, ghost. I'm about to go home, go to sleep. And I was like... Stand goes. I give tonight's episode an A plus. Y'all know episode four and five is going to be lit. That's when they up the ante, honey, and shit just get wild. So I cannot wait for episode four and five. Ghost is a fuck nigga, a fuck boy. I want him to get ran over and shot. Angela gets shot in her pinky toe. I want everybody to motherfucking die except for Tasha and the kids and Tommy. Everybody else can die. I don't give a fuck about nobody else. Um, let me know what you all think about tonight's episode down in the comment section. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and thumbs up this video. I love you all so much and I hope you enjoyed this. Have a safe week and my new book, Radio Silence, is in stores right now. Make sure to check out new show, Since You Ask, where we answer all your questions on dating, love, sex, virginity, family issues. If you have a question for us, send your questions to sensueax1 at gmail.com and we will give you our advice. The first video that is up on my channel right now is fucking hilarious. We had a question on virginity. One girl didn't know who her baby daddy was. The tea was spilled, honey. One of the real housewives of Potomac Sun is dating one of my viewers. Girl, get into it now. Watch the episode of Since You Ask right now. I love you all. See you next week. Bye. My latest book, Radio Silence, is available right now on Kindle, Nook, and in paperback. Check it out now at Amazon or BarnesandNobles.com.